Yeah. Well, I think a couple of things. Um, I think on balance, and I'd be interested in your point of view, on balance, this has been a good thing. That it has, you know, created a pot of money that um, enables schools who do a great job to uh, access those funds. And um, I think as we look across the school districts, about half the school districts have signed up for Race for the Top. Am I right about that? I think, I think so. so. Sure and, uh, and so I think on balance it was the right thing. Um, is it perfect? No. But I do think it is, it is changing the behavior of school districts and it's changing the behavior of some of the unions around what is acceptable and what is not. And I'll give you a good example. Up until Race for the Top, um, and because in order to qualify race to race for the top, actually you had to be able to link student performance to certain teachers, right? So that you could evaluate how good or, or not so good the teachers were. I actually think that's the right thing. Um, but that was deeply, um, you know, there was a lot of pushback on that by many, many people. I think that was probably the right thing. And so that actually created the ability to get a data system in place to link student performance to teachers. So not perfect, but I think on, on the margin, this has been the right thing. Because you know what? what? It comes back to this notion, if we keep on doing the same thing and expect different results, we're not going to get different results. So I would be inclined to try things that haven't been done before to see if we can move the needle on this. My only concern is when you take the federal money, what comes with it is the federal strings. And if you're trying to push local control back down to... True. True. There's no question about that. But it did, I think, move the teachers' union on some of the issues that they were pushing back really, really hard on. So, good point. Thank you for that. Yeah, in the back. Okay, one right behind you, Ann Robin. Thank you. In regard to the enormous amount of money that was getting out of the Yeah. and the plan to release them, essentially, to the new what alternatives do we have? Instead of letting them go, yeah. house them efficiently and then more cost effective manner. So we have a, an enormous problem here. Remember when I told you we have an infrastructure built for the population half our size? The prisons are part of that infrastructure. And so we are housing about 160,000 prisoners in a in prison system that was designed for 90,000. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get out from under the federal receiver. We've been under federal receivership in the prison system for 10 years in the state. And so it's like maneuvering with one hand tied behind your back. So I think the first thing we ought to do is send prisoners from California to states that have capacity. And there are some, Michigan being one. And it will be economic to do that because on average the cost of housing a prisoner in California is about $50,000 a year, double the national average. Mm -hmm. So if we can send a prisoner to, to Michigan, we relieve overcrowding and we save money all at the same time. This is opposed by, as you can imagine, many unions. It's the right thing to do and I will fight for that. Yeah, well. Just one of the things, yeah. Well, let me what just about, finish what about this. Yeah, I think that's a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, I am not for releasing prisoners early. I'm not for changing sentencing guidelines. I'm a firm supporter of three strikes and you're out. I mean, one of the bright spots in California has been our record on law and order in the last 10 to 15 years. Let's not diminish that. Let's, you know, let's find um, places to send these prisoners. And in the end, the cold hard truth is we're going to have to build more prisons. No one likes that answer. Who wants to build more prisons? But the fact is, we have to. And uh, this comes back to cutting government spending so we can create some capacity to invest in the things that are at stake for the future of our, of our state. Also the, uh, private institutions? Yeah, we should look at privatization of prisons. You know, um, I haven't made a final decision on this. Other states have, have tried this and it's worked quite well. There have also been some stories that have not worked out as well. But my instinct is we've got to look at a whole host of new solutions. We've got to try things that are different, and, and it's one of the things I think we should look at. All right, why don't we do one last question, because it is getting a little toasty in here, I think. <laughs> so we'll go to you. Um, you had said that uh, one of the target groups you want to, want to uh, try to focus on is the 18 to 20 yeah. year old population. Um, right now, higher education is, yep. is taking a hard, huge hit. And um, what, do you, what do you plan to do as far as uh, funding higher education? Yeah. So while we fix kindergarten through 12th grade, we can't take our eye off what is still the most fabulous higher education system in the country. UC, CSU, and the community college system. You know, a list came out last week of the top 15 um, public university systems in the country, we had six of them. 
So, and this is our innovation edge. This is, you know, if you look at, you see um, San Diego and biotech, you see Irvine and medical devices, you see Davis and agriculture. These ecosystems take years to build and they are the innovation engine. So we have to protect these at all costs. And I just talked to a young man the other day who couldn't afford to go back to UC last fall, UC Berkeley last fall because fees had gone up by 32% and his mom had lost her job. So my view is we have got to protect UC. And I was meeting with Mark Udoff the other day who said, listen, the first 10% cuts made us better. We got more efficient, we got smarter. Now we're starting to get into real bone and meat. And uh, so it comes back to prioritization. It comes back to doing things more efficiently um, that, that are not as critical as funding our higher education system. This is the, one of the gems of California. So I would do everything I could to protect this. And what we can't do, I mean, I am not for this fee increase. You know, one of the great things about this system is that has been access to, to all kinds of different people from all walks of life for many, many years. And I think that's a hallmark of what we stand for in California. So, well, let me wind up just by saying thank you for coming tonight. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And as I said, I need each and every one of you um, to volunteer for this campaign, to help get me elected, and then I need you to help me change California. We can do this, but this is not, as I said, an easy job. This is not for the faint of heart. On a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is really hard, this is a 12. <laughs> and uh, I can't do this by myself. So please go to the website, sign up to volunteer, sign up to join one of our coalitions. Um, I should introduce, where is Joan? Is Joan here? Yes. Come up front here. Joan is our Central Valley uh, Regional Field Rep. She is organizing our volunteer effort on behalf of the campaign. See Joan, she will put you to work. <laughs> yes, I will. So thank you for coming tonight. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.